Good morning, folks. Ooh, that's a live microphone. I've decided I haven't figured out the combination between my glasses and my headset for the microphone and my mask. So I thought I'm just going to use this, and then when I preach, I'll, I'll put my headphone on uh, this morning. But I'm glad to see you. Welcome to Broadest Church in our time of worship this morning. We had a had a nice uh, first service. And, you know, as we gather here, we just always remember there are other folks who are gathering in the parking lot and uh, some uh, at, at home, although we had a little technical issue with the Facebook today, but we'll get that ironed out. And, uh, and then also, of course, our, our Hebron campus, which is meeting at 9 o'clock, and so they have uh, finished up their worship time this morning. And so we just want to remember we all one big family uh, in this, but I am glad you are here. Uh, this side wins the attendance award today. It kind of shifts from week to week, but uh, nice to see um, groups together and families together. Uh, I just want to share a few things with you. You got your bulletin. As you know, there not all that terribly much going on, but uh, there, there is some stuff. And um, we are taking up another food drive for the Moments of Hope ministry. You might remember that we did this uh, Oh, a couple months ago, and we actually took up the food at the, uh, the drive-in service, when we had the drive-in service. And so <clears throat> we're not able to do our regular uh, feeding ministry, the same as it's been done in the past. Um, but we will be preparing 200 lunches and then also uh, providing some other food for their ministry. So you'll see details about that in the, on the back of the bulletin. And also just to remind you that uh, in the month of, of July, and we're almost there, uh, we'll be collecting dessert recipes. So uh, some of the ladies of the church want to put out a, a uh, recipe book really just for desserts, um, particularly if it's something that's been used for the living nativity, uh, but not doesn't necessarily have to be that. So work on that in the coming weeks, and there's a collection box out in the commons, or you can email it into the, uh, to the church office and, uh, and that will be fine. And just so you will uh, be aware, be looking for it, for those of you who received the newsletter in the mail, um, it'll actually be mailed out tomorrow, so be looking for it this week, and it will uh, just share some of the, the, the plans for the next month or two, really for the summer. As you know, we really can't make plans more than a few weeks at a time. Everything changes uh, uh, just constantly. Um, but then the newsletter also ought to be out or, or will be coming to you electronically if you receive it in the email, and it always gets posted to our, our website um, as well. So I appreciate you coming. I appreciate you be, being willing to, to do the masks. I, I know it's always an annoyance for, for all of us, but we're also watching that there are these outbreaks around the nation, and we certainly don't want that to be around here. So thank you for uh, participating in that, uh, in that way. And we just look forward to the day when we're kind of kind of free from it. But I'm going to ask you to pause. So we're going to pray together as we enter into our worship time. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for this beautiful day, beautiful day we had yesterday as well. And we're glad to be in your house this morning and to have a time to sing and to pray and to study the scriptures together. And we just ask that you would open the eyes of our hearts that we might see you and know you better, and also that we would see one another, uh, that we would understand that the people around us are precious, that there are some people who are hurting, there are some that, that need someone to rejoice with them, and we can be uh, that kind of person that really steps in to, to minister in other people's lives. And I pray, Lord, that you would just receive all the honor and glory through our service today, because we are here because we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Broadus family. Uh, you'll notice in the bulletin um, that I am asking for you to share some of your favorite uh, contemporary praise songs um, or, or hymns. You know me, I, I like to do both. Um, and if you have a testimony as to why that song is important to you, I would, I would love to hear. Um, one of the things that has been really rough this season is, is, is it just feels like there's a, there's a disconnect. Um, and uh, I, I know that's the enemy messing, messing with me, but just so that I can kind of keep in touch with, with what blesses you, I, I would love to hear, um, and especially if, if you have a testimony. So please let me know, 
and we will do our best to try and, and learn the song. Um, if it's Toby Mac, I love Toby Mac, but I can't dance like him, so just keep that in mind, okay? <laughs> would you please stand? Turn your ear to heaven and hear the noise inside The sound of angels all in the sound of angel songs and all this for a king We could join and sing all to Christ the King How constant, how divine This love of ours will rise Oh, how constant, how divine This song of ours will rise Will rise I know there's lots of kids in here this morning, and I know there's a few more listening at home. So when you have an answer to one of my questions, you just feel free to shout it out. And if you're just a child of God, which means you're not really a child anymore, you can shout out as well. Okay? 
So Pastor Phil's going to be preaching from some of the psalms today that are called creation psalms. They talk about creation quite a bit, so I thought it would be good to review what happened on the days of creation as we go um, into this. So on the first day, what do you remember happened on the first day of creation? Nothing. Dark. What did, what did God say first? Let there be. Let there be light. Okay, so we had light, um, and we called that day, and we had dark, and it was very good. You're kind of quiet. Yell through those mouths, okay? Um, and then on day two, we had the sky and the wet stuff. Water, okay? So that's on day two. On day three, um, he gathered some of the waters together and made the dry land and the seas, so kind of separated that. Um, in addition, there were plants and flowers and grass and tree. Now there was places for them to grow. On the fourth day, big yellow ball in the sky. Sun, right? The sun, the moon, the stars, and then began the seasons as well. On the fifth day, we've got the birds and the fish and the other sea creatures. And then what happened on day six? Animals, right? And us. Animals and man, Okay. Um, and then on day seven, God rested from all of the work, and he made that day holy, which is the day we have today of Sunday. In Genesis 2.18, uh, the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a, a helper suitable for him. So God made woman. So he did not intend for us to spend our time alone. That's why we fellowship here in church. We have families and things like that. But there's a group of folks right now that are kind of really sticking out kind of as the sore thumb or the poster children of being alone. And they are folks who are in uh, our assisted living homes or nursing homes. And they're not allowed to see family. They're not uh, just doctors and nurses are kind of what they're being able to interact with unless there's a way to get Zoom or something like that. So the children today in their um, little packet... They have a little letter, a template to fill out that we can send to one of these folks, and it talks about who they are and how old they are and what they like and what they don't like. Um, for the older ones of you, my older children of God, there are blank note cards back there for you to also participate. These are going just randomly to people. If you know someone in our church that you'd like to send a special note to, please address it to them inside so I'll know where it needs to go. Otherwise, just say, dear friend, or something like that. Um, they need to come back to me by the 15th of July, and there's a basket back there as you leave worship for them. Okay? Sound good? All right, let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the world that you've created for us. Help us to care for it and to work and live and play in harmony with each other. I would also ask a very special blessing on these cards and letters that we're about to write, that you, they would be used by you to encourage and strengthen those who receive them. Open our hearts and minds to your message for us in the music, the scripture, the sermon, all of these things that, that uh, Pastor Phil is going to share with us. Uh, let us be moved to action that's going to change us to be more like your son. I also pray if there's anyone here today who's listening, not even just in the building, but folks who are listening, who haven't accepted Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, that today would be that day, that they would make that decision and they would follow Jesus for the rest of their lives. I pray this in his powerful name. And they all said, amen. amen. Also, if you forgot your Father's Day gift last week, there are a few more of those left. And kids, get those eggs out. It's time to worship. Shake those eggs. This is a great egg-shaking song. He is Yahweh. Would you please stand?
standing on the mountains Who is on the earth belong Who is bigger than the heavens And the lover of my soul oh, Creator God, He is Yahweh The great I am, He is Yahweh Lord of all, He is Yahweh. Rose of Sharon, He is Yahweh. The righteous Son, He is Yahweh. Three in one, He is Yahweh. Who is He that makes me happy? And who is He that gives me peace? He that brings me comfort and turns the bitter into sweet. Who is stirring up my passion and who is rising up in me? Everything I need Creator God, He is Yahweh The great I am, He is Yahweh The Lord of all, He is Yahweh Rose of Sharon, He is Yahweh The righteous Son, He is Yahweh The three in one, He is Yahweh Creator God Creator God, He is Yahweh, the great I am, He is Yahweh, the Lord of all, He is Yahweh. And rose up Sharon, He is Yahweh, the righteous Son, He is Yahweh, a three in one, He is Yahweh. And you are holy and eternal. Forever you will reign Every knee will bow before you Every tongue will confess your name All the angels give you glory As they stand before your throne Here on earth we gather To declare your name alone Yahweh 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 Yahweh, the great I am, He is Yahweh, the Lord of all, He is Yahweh. And rose of Sharon, He is Yahweh, the righteous Son, He is Yahweh, the three in one, He is Yahweh. I heard 
Through the watches of the night, God, go with me through it. Before we, uh, we have a prayer here at the moment, I want you to look your best for about 15 seconds. Can you do that? Keep your masks on. For some of you, that's looking your best, but uh, just keep your mask on. Um, you might see from time to time during our worship, perhaps you've already noticed it on other Sundays, that either me or somebody gets up here with our, our phone and we kind of scan the congregation. And, of course, it's always fun to kind of, you know, look and see the church folks. But you know the real reason we do that? It's called contact tracing. If somebody were, you know, I pray this does not happen at our church at all, but if somebody were to, to be positive for the, for the virus, we could look at any given Sunday on the videos and see who was at church on that Sunday. Were they there? And... You know, some churches actually have people register so they know exactly who's at the, at the church on that day. But in this case, we'd also know who you're sitting closest to. So that is why we do that little, that little video. And now, of course, the danger is that somebody's going to call my phone during the service. But we'll, we'll hope that doesn't happen. Um, we're going to have, a, have a, a prayer. I actually want to, to preface it with the, 
with the, uh, the beginning scripture reading. And so uh, this is, um, who's ever up there on the, on the computer, go to the scripture reading first, if you can, the uh, Psalm 19, and just the, the first four verses. So if you have your Bible, you're welcome to look there as well. We're going to be looking at a couple of different Psalms uh, this morning, Psalm 19 and, and Psalm 8. Um, but I want to, uh, to share these verses and let that kind of set the stage for your spirit as we pray as well. Psalm 19 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of His hands. Day after day they pour forth speech, night after night they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning just very much aware of the beautiful world you have created. We had a beautiful day yesterday. It's a beautiful day today. But Lord, even when it's raining, even when it's snowing, whatever it is, we know that this is all part of your plan and it is remarkable. Yesterday, Lord, a number of us, we got to be out at a lake and, and to see the, the trees and, and to see the animals out wandering around. <clears throat> Just truly a wonderful thing to, to experience the creation that you have made. And I just pray that you would open up our hearts this morning that we might understand you better as our great creator God. But Lord, I also want to pray this morning for, for folks that need some special care. We do know that there are those in the, the nursing homes, that there are those in the hospitals that, that need your care. <coughs> Excuse me. And Lord, we know that there are people who are lonely and who are hurting. And we just ask that you would fill them with your spirit. And also, Lord, make clear to us how we can go out as your ministers and, and help to lift people's spirits and, and to help them, even if it's just over the phone or through an, an email, uh, we want to do our part. And Lord, we also know that we live in a, in a world that is hurting. There are a lot of folks who are are looking for better days ahead. And this week we're going to be thinking about our nation and the wonderful blessing of this place where we, where we live. And yet we know that there is improvement to be made. So Lord, we pray for, for justice. We pray for kindness. We pray for, for peace and safety. All of these things are part of your plan for us. And I thank you for those who are, are helping to, to bring about positive change. But Lord, we know that ultimately it only comes through you, through your work in our hearts. So we dedicate ourselves to you. And Lord, in this time that we have together this morning, speak to us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So Psalm 19, kind of kicking off uh, our, our sermon time this morning. We are in the Psalms for the summer. Um, and this Psalm is called a Psalm of David. And I'm kind of assuming that means David actually wrote it rather than it was just inspired by something from his, his life. To me, <clears throat> it sounds like something David would write. David spent a lot of nights out under the stars when he was young watching his sheep. He traveled the hills and the valleys. He watched the trees swaying in the wind. He drank from the brooks of cool water and he ate from fruit trees, I imagine. He watched in awe as the, the sun rose and the sun set each day. I imagine he trembled at the lightning that came in the storms and marveled at the flashes of, of a shooting star on a clear night. What he uh, often saw, he ended up sharing in some way through his poetry and in song. I still kind of like the King James version of that first verse. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Now, I don't have the gift of poetry, but I came to this same conclusion. What the, the first verse says, that the firmament, the heavens, all that is around us, it shows the handiwork of God. I came to that conclusion at a fairly young age, sitting out on a seawall on the west coast of Korea. Most of you know enough of my story to know my parents were missionaries there. And, 
and uh, out there on the west coast we had the beautiful sunsets and then it just got really dark you know, on a moonless night really no place better to go if you want to watch stars than out on the ocean or or beside the ocean but then through the years i've been reminded of god's creative genius when i snorkeled among tropical fish in the bahamas or looked out over the shenandoah valley from the the top of the skyline drive or peered through a telescope to see the craters on the moon something of god is revealed in the created world the planets stars the the the, the moon the, the sun, all of these things, then the plants and the animals as well, they speak to us of their creator. David kind of personified even inanimate objects in order to make this point. Every day, he says, when the sun rises, it speaks of God's glory, God's faithfulness. Every night when the moon glows with a reflective light or the stars twinkle in the, in the distance, God's creativity is clear. So David reminds us, whether it's day or, or night, there is never a time that nature does not uh, say something about its maker. David said that anywhere that people speak to each other, to the east, to the west, to the north, to the south, whether they're speaking Hebrew or English or Chinese or Arabic or some tribal tongue or sign language, Whatever language the people may employ for their communication, nature speaks of God's universal tongue. There's no geographical boundaries to the, the world's testimony about our Creator God. So the Apostle Paul in the book of Romans, and, and uh, some of us are having a Romans Bible study on Wednesday night, so we dealt with this a couple of of weeks ago Romans chapter 1 verse 20 says since the creation of the world God's invisible qualities his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made therefore Paul says people are without excuse if they ignore God though God is invisible to our physical eyes he has made his existence and even somewhat his character, he's made it known through this world in which we live. So what is it we can learn about God from the world around us? Well, Paul said it right there. One, it says something about his power. Only God has the power to create. Uh, most of you know the old joke about the the scientist who met with God and, and was bragging about all the advances of modern medicine and science, biomedical engineering, all of that. And so he says to God, you know, we can now map out the, the, the genome of, a, uh, of an organism. We can manipulate DNA. We can even grow human organs in a lab. In fact, the scientist said to God, we don't know if we need you anymore. I bet we could even make a better human being than you can. And so a contest was proposed to see who could make a better person from scratch. God told the scientist that uh, he could go first. The scientist began to gather together some of the dust of the earth to get started, but God stopped him and said, hey, hey, wait, get your own dirt. Just a reminder that God and only God creates something from nothing. We have the power to manipulate the world around us, but not actually make anything. But consider the power that we see in creation. Consider the, the power of the sun to, to heat the earth and make life possible. Consider the, 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 the planets uh, twirling in space you know, you've swung a yo-yo by its string at some time, and there's that, I hope I get the forces right, the centrifugal force that is pulling that yo-yo out, and you let it go, and it just zooms on out. And, and yet you think, well, why don't the planets do that? Why are they you know, following this course and not shooting out? Well, what is then that centripetal force that, that holds it in its place? God has all that worked out. What about the birth of an island? What about an, 
an, an underwater volcano that spews forth the, uh, the, the lava, and then over time it, it, it cools and there is erosion and the introduction of seeds through the currents of the ocean, and you end up with a tropical paradise. Who would have ever thought that that is how it could happen? Think of the power and the patience that it took God to form the Grand Canyon from a flow of water. All of these things are testimonies to God's power. But then uh, there's also His faithfulness. Consider the rising and the setting of the sun. Not only has it happened every day of our lives, it's happened every day of everybody's life. God put it all into, into being. What about the waxing and the waning of the light on the moon? That used to fascinate early astronomers trying to figure that out. And how the moon actually uh, controls the daily tides or the predictability of the seasons of the year. We know that we can count on these laws of nature, but even more so we can count on the God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever speaks of his faithfulness, but then his creativity. Man, you can't look around at the world and not, not <coughs> learn something about God's creativity. Look at just birds. The hummingbird, of course, is the smallest bird. It can beat its wings 90 times, not per minute, 90 times per second. Try to figure that out. The little bird, the average hummingbird, weighs less than a nickel. A hummingbird egg is about the size of a small navy bean. Then contrast that with the flamingo with its bright pink color. And yet this flamingo has these pencil-thin legs, and even with those little skinny legs, usually chooses just to stand on one of them. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense at all. What about the penguin? Fat, flightless? but can survive a brutal win winter that none of us could survive and gets in the water, it's a bird, gets in the water and is able to fly like a bird flies in the air. The ostrich, the largest bird of course, can run up to 45 miles an hour. And did you know that the yolk of an ostrich egg is the largest single cell? Remarkable that God would have all of this creativity. And of course, you can think of other animals like the duck-billed platypus or even a hippopotamus or the proboscis monkey. You know what I'm talking about? The one with the big old flabby nose. Who would even think of all of this variety? I think it also tells us that God has a, a sense of humor. And one reason I think God has a, a sense of humor is because if he didn't, why would he give us one? He created us in his image. But creation also speaks of God's limitlessness. Thousands of years ago, it was thought that the earth was all that there was. And of course, at one time, it thought it was flat. The stars, they thought, were just pinpricks of light shining through some curtain of space. And then came the understanding of planets and stars. And the belief, though, was still that the earth was the center of the universe. We know that's Ashland, but okay. You know, but they thought the earth was the center of the universe and that the sun revolved. And then along came Copernicus around 1530 with this heretical notion that the earth actually revolves around the sun instead. And then we gained more understanding of that we are one speck in our galaxy, the Milky Way. Now we have pictures from like the Hubble telescope, and I would have no way of knowing this is true or not, or who decides these things. But uh, somewhere I read that they say that the Hubble telescope shows thousands of galaxies in a piece of sky the size of a dime at 70 feet. Does that make sense? All of a sudden, you get this idea of the limitlessness of what God has created. And does that make you feel small? Perhaps it should. But more than that, it makes the Creator look very big. 
If God can create a universe whose edges have yet to be found, then surely he is so limitless we will never fully understand him. So that brings me to my next point. Creation says something about the mystery of God. Now, the great scientist, Albert Einstein, was was not a Christian, but he said this about mystery. He said, the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the source of all true art and science. He to whom this emotion is a stranger, who can no longer pause to wonder and stand wrapped in awe, is as good as dead. His eyes are closed. Well, God Himself is a mystery. How He exists in and of Himself, uh, His great power, His great wisdom. But you know what? I, I kind of wish Einstein had, been a, had, had spent a little more time exploring that mystery of God rather than just the creation. But the greatest mystery of all is what the uh, New Testament extols is God's love for us that a God that big would love us who are so small. It's what the Apostle Paul calls in Ephesians the mystery of the gospel, the good news that God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for us. But even in creation, we learn of God's love for us. What does creation say about God's love for mankind? Well, He loves us enough to create a place in this vast world that we could call our own. He gave us a planet in this vast universe that is habitable, the right amount of gravity, the right amount of oxygen, the right amount of of light. Do you think it's a coincidence that water expands and so ice floats when it freezes, you know, when the water freezes? When most things, when they get cold and they freeze, do what? They contract. But if if water contracted as it froze, you know what would happen? That ice would settle to the bottom of the lakes and the rivers, and they would just fill up with ice and really never thaw. We couldn't survive that way. But God thought of it all. What if God didn't build into the world this great water purification system, the evaporation and the and the rain and the soil? It's what we need to survive. This world is not just habitable, it's amazing and it's beautiful. So the created world teaches us much about God, but at the same time, it teaches us something about ourselves. So if you have your Bible, go to Psalm 8. Psalm 8, not a long song, psalm, but here's what it says. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, and all that swim the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You look at that psalm and you see it speaks about our finiteness. David says, you know, when I consider the the stars, all that you have made, the heavens, what is man that you are mindful of him? Why would a God that creates all that even care about us? You know... This world around us can certainly make us feel small. Not only do we individually take up, you know, remarkably little space, we're also here only for a moment of time. 
James, the brother of Jesus, wrote, What is your life? You are only a mist or a vapor that appears for a moment and then it vanishes. And this caused David to question why God gives a thought to us, why God cares about us at all. But amazingly, God does not belittle us for our finiteness. Instead, He magnifies what we are worth. The psalm talks about our uniqueness. It says, you have made him, and it's talking about your people, mankind. You have made him a little lower than the angels or the heavenly beings <coughs> and crowned him with glory and honor. We are more than just advanced animals. We are created in God's image. And theologians and scientists have work for millennia trying to figure out just what that means. What does it mean that we as people are special? Is it our opposable thumb? Is it our ability to talk? Is it our advanced intellect? Is it the knowledge of our own mortality, the fact we know we're going to die? I wonder if our uniqueness is in our ability to consciously glorify God to be able to commune with Him, to know Him, build a relationship with Him, and then make the decision that we will seek to please Him. I think that's a glimpse of the image of God. But God gives us a purpose. The verse talked about He made us rulers. And I think when we think of rulers, we think, okay, I'm a ruler now, I can do whatever I want. But you have to realize what is employing here is not the earthly standard of what a ruler does. Taking advantage of their subjects, receiving all the, uh, you know, all the, all the glory and, and all their whims taken care of. No, what's being used here is ruler in the purest form. A good ruler, a good king, a good authority. Their desire and their purpose is to care for those who are under them. And that's what it is saying here. The book of Genesis makes it clear that our role as rulers in God's creation is not to selfishly use and abuse it, but rather to diligently care for it and protect it. And we understand the role of the caretaker from the example of Adam. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 says, The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and care for it. That's our purpose in this world. Whether we're talking about the, the, the natural environment or the people around us, we have a purpose here. God carved out a place for us in His created world, and He gives us the privilege of making a difference there. And we do that, we make that difference by appreciating Him and giving Him the glory we make that difference by responding to the love He has shown to us in His Son, Jesus Christ, by putting our faith in Him and obeying Him. And we make a difference when we care for our family and our friends. We make a difference when we, we take care of this earth. We fulfill our purpose when we become peacemakers and when we involve ourselves in Christ's ministry of reconciliation. We become who we are designed to be when we share with others through word and deed that we know the Creator and we honor Him and we invite them to do the same. But let's be honest. Sometimes we're not very good at this. Going back to Psalm 19, if you look at the whole psalm, which we did not read, it, it kind of explains why David ended uh, the, the last verse of the psalm, and I'll read it for you in a moment. But in the psalm, he talks about the, the creation and how the creation beautifully speaks of who God is. And then he goes on to talk about the Word of God, God's communication with us how it so clearly, truthfully, and beautifully speaks of God Himself. If some of these verses probably ring a bell to you. The law of the Lord is perfect. The precepts of the Lord are right. They are more precious than gold and sweeter than honey. So the creation and the commandments of God speak well of Him. But we are not always good at representing Him. 
our lives don't always speak well of God. We don't always speak with truth and beauty. We don't always reflect the glory of God like we should. So David knew this. And the 14th verse of Psalm 19 says this, a prayer to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O God, my rock and my redeemer. May the witness of the heavens cause you to glorify your maker as they also glorify him. That is our purpose and our calling. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so blessed. We live in a beautiful land. Here in Virginia, we have beautiful mountains covered in trees. We have flowing rivers and creeks. We've got the ocean, just all that beauty. And yet, Lord, there are places that are very dry and they're, 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 they're deserts or they're, they seem stark to us. And yet, even that has a great beauty. Some places remain frozen year-round, and yet there is beauty there. Help us, Lord, to open our eyes to the beauty in all that you have made, and most of all, in the creation of the, of the people around us, knowing that they are precious to you. So, Heavenly Father, we want our lives to make a difference in this world that wherever we are, whoever we're, we're with, that, that somehow it would be a better moment, a better place, because we are there to bring witness of you. Lord, we fail to do it often, but I pray that you would work in our hearts, make us aware, make us bold, make us committed to sharing uh, the, the grandness of your glory wherever we go. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we close our service today, we're going to sing How Great Is Our God, very appropriate for, for today. And as we're singing, let the Lord kind of speak to your heart. The response that you need to make is not one I can prescribe for you. It's really one that you and the Lord need to talk about. If you want a moment up at the altar steps, I'm going to give you space to do that. If you feel like you need to talk with me about a decision on your heart, uh, come and speak to me. We'll set up a time to, to get together and talk more. But just realize, when the Spirit moves in your heart, that is the God of the universe singling you out from, from the billions of people, saying, I want to speak to them today. Don't let it pass you by. Let's stand and sing together. splendor of the King clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice all the earth rejoice and he wraps himself in light and darkness tries to and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. And how great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and oh, see how great.
the Godhead three in one. Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the to be here this morning. We are grateful to be reminded that you created everything and you created us and you would not leave us nor forsake us. This week, Lord God, no matter what challenges come our way, help us to, to remember that, that you created the universe and that you have our back. We love you, Jesus. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. 